lockdown mode. It's three in the morning and the demonstrations are entering perhaps their 14th hour. It's not quite clear what people want beyond the departure of Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan. But what can no one can deny is the size and the fervour of these demonstrations which have sprung up throughout this city at sea, in almost every part of it. The scene had been very different about 12 hours earlier when a group of peaceful demonstrators sat down in a corner of Taksim Square to protest against the eviction of some of their number from the adjoining Gezi Park earlier that morning. I was on the scene and I saw the gas come down and the water cannon used, just the beginning of hours of clashes in which both tools were incessantly used by the police as they tried to force the protesters out of central Istanbul. Despite that, Tens of thousands of protesters came the next day from many corners of Istanbul, arriving on the European shore, waving their flags and calling for Prime Minister Erdogan to resign. Though there were some socially conservative Turks among them, this was a very largely secular group of people. People who were bankers, lawyers, academics, accountants, who were complaining that they felt that the police brutality was now too much to bear and that Mr. Erdogan's rule threatened their lifestyles. The protesters have different faces at different times. The celebratory gatherings in the afternoon are sometimes replaced by smaller groups of stone-throwing youth in the evenings and nights. And what remains unclear is the effect they're going to have on Turkey's political system. Prime Minister Erdogan repeated on Monday that he had the support of more than 50% of the people and saw no reason to bow to the demonstrators. He has won three elections and is confident of the fourth. And yet, the sheer level of discontent and the sheer scope of support that the demonstrations have shown seem to suggest that in some sense at least, Mr. Erdogan's wings are likely to be clipped. I'm standing in Taksim Square where the protesters were gassed by police on Friday afternoon, just a few days ago. It's a very different place here right now. There's graffiti and flags everywhere. No police and barricades, yet the place is clean and there seems to be very little crime, if any, at all. And the question really is what this means for Mr Erdogan and for Turkey as a whole. He wanted to become more of a regional player, more of a regional power. He still does. But at the moment, the risk is that his reputation will be as beaten and as battered as that of Taksim Square itself. Daniel Dombey, Financial Times, Istanbul.